Welcome to E-Train with V-Train, quality training at affordable rates. This is the E-Training and remote arm of our technology training service brand, and we aim to deliver relevant shortcuts and tips for our tech users and subscribers. This lesson covers Microsoft Excel 2003. Now, a function is a built-in formula in Excel, or mathematical instruction. Functions start with an equal sign and generally have two components, the name and the argument. The argument is required data enclosed in parentheses. Now, Excel provides over 200 built-in functions, and you can use a function by itself or in conjunction with other formulas and functions. And what we want to do is calculate using one of these built-in functions. Here's a situation. Your manager wants to add totals and averages at the year-to-date level for each employee ID on the sales data worksheet. Additionally, she wants to know at a glance the highest and the lowest sales totals for each month. You've decided to use functions rather than create basic formulas to calculate these numbers because functions will save you a considerable amount of time and will also help you get the worksheet back to your manager on schedule. Step one, we want to total the year-to-date total for the first employee ID. Let's select cell H7. Click the Auto Sum button. Draw a selection marquee around cells C, D, E, and F7. Press Enter to populate the cell H7 with the YTD or year-to-date total for the first employee. We can select cell H7 and if we hover over that particular cell with our mouse we'll get a tool tip or a pop-up comment which indicates that the formula refers to a range of cells with additional numbers adjacent to it. Now, in this case, this refers to the employee ID field, which contains a number that we do not want to include in our calculation. Step 2. Let's total the year-to-date totals for the remaining employee ID numbers. So let's select cell H8. Choose Insert, Function. To open the Insert Function dialog box, with the SUM function selected by default. Next, in the Select a Function region of the Insert Function dialog box, double-click SUM to open the Function Argument dialog box. Drag the Function Arguments box so that you can see its content and cells C8 through F8 in the worksheet. On the sheet, Drag a selection marquee around cells C, D, E, and F8. The function argument dialog box will minimize while we're doing this. Now, in the function dialog box, click OK to populate cell H8 with the year-to-date total for the employee ID. Drag the fill handle from cell H8 down to cell H10 to populate the year-to-date totals for the last two employee IDs. Step 3, we want to average the year-to-date for the first employee ID. So select cell I7. Click the drop-down arrow next to the Auto Sum button and select Average. Draw a selection marquee around cells C, D, E, and F7, and then press Enter to populate cell I7 with the year-to-date average for the employee ID. Step 4. We want to average the year-to-date averages for the remaining employee IDs, and to do that we're going to select cell I8. Choose Insert Function to open the Function dialog box. In the Select a Function region of the Insert dialog box, double-click Average 
to open the function arguments box and drag the function dialog box so that we can see its content and cells C8 through F8 in the worksheet. On the worksheet we can drag a selection marquee around cells C, D, E, and F8. In the function dialog box, click OK to populate cell I8 with the YTD average for that employee. And let's drag cells I8's fill handle down to cell I10 to populate the year-to-date averages for the last two employees. Step 5. Let's create a row that displays the highest value for each month. Select cell B15, type highest, and press enter. Select cell C15, and then click the drop-down arrow next to the Auto Sum button. Select Max for Maximum, and drag a selection marquee around cells C7, C8, 9, and C10, and press Enter. Select cell C15, and then drag the fill handle to cell F15 to populate the cells D15 through F15 with the maximum value for each month. Step 6. Create a row that displays the lowest value for each month and then we can save our work. So we're going to select cell B16 and that's where we're going to type Lois and press enter. In C16 we're going to choose insert function to open the insert function dialog box and from the or select a category drop down we want to select statistical in the select a function region scroll to min or minimum and select it and click OK. Drag the function arguments dialog box so that we can see its content and the cells C7 through C10 in the worksheet. On the worksheet we can drag a selection marquee around cells C7, 8, 9, and 10. In the function arguments dialog box we can click OK to populate the cell C16 with the min minimum value for the month of January. We can drag cell C16's fill handle to cell F16 to populate the cells D16 through F16 with the minimum value for each month. We can go ahead and save our work. So we've just completed a calculation, but using the built-in system's functions. That's going to wrap up this session. Be certain to sign up and subscribe on our homepage for a continuous stream of training tips and other content. We're always available online at vtrain.biz. That's v-train.biz. I'm Bruce Robinson for vtrain. Thanks for tuning in.